Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do a very simple, very quick project. Uh, we're going to make some adjustments to the air tanks on this bus. So we're gonna crawl under here and shut a flashlight up here. This is the main air tank. This is a, looks like a three chamber. Most of my other buses have one dual chamber and then a secondary. Um, but this one looks to be all in one because I only see one tank under here and I have three um, drain valves. Third one back there. So it's very important that you, once a day, when the bus is being driven every day, um, you know, drain the fluids out of your air tanks. You know, your air dryer will remove most of the moisture. Um, you know, from your airlines, but you always want your airlines to be dry and some moisture will accumulate in these tanks. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to replace these manual, um, uh, these manual drain valves with one that have a short little leash and we will run that up under the side of the bus and mount it somewhere here where it's easy to get at. So that's project number one. So that way, every time I drive this bus, I don't need to crawl under here to drain the air tanks which if more people would do that, they would probably actually drain their air tanks as often as they're supposed to. So we'll put those cords in, make that super easy. The other thing we're going to do is International is kind enough to provide a service port up here that you can plug into, but that's not a fitting that anybody really uses. So we're gonna replace that with a standard uh, air fitting. And that gets us two things. First of all, if I ever have to have this bus towed because it's not running, the uh, tow truck can literally run an airline into this off of the tow truck and air up the suspension and air up the brakes and then they can tow it without having to go underneath the back end and manually disable the air brakes um, you know or you know tow it by the the back end um, to, to get the rear wheels off the ground the other benefit to that is i can then run small air tools off of this uh, so when the bus is running and putting out air pressure um, you know, I can put a chuck on here to inflate, you know, inflate tires. You know, I can run small air tools. Um, probably not enough power to run air hammer significantly long enough to like remove a lug nut. Uh, but you can do some small stuff with this, which will be nice for on the road. So we're going to do those two things today. Um, you'll see the oil stain on the ground here. When I did open up these uh, valves, um, I do have oil in these tanks, which means that the air compressor is starting to fail. So that's one of the reasons drain your tanks regularly. You don't have to drain them all the way down to zero. You just need to drain any moisture or fluid out of there. And if you see oil coming through, you know you have a failing air compressor, and it's a good time to get that repaired before the thing dies altogether and leaves you stranded somewhere. So I'm going to put down the camera now, go get those other fittings, uh, go get a wrench and pull these fittings off, and then... Um, you know, get the new fittings ready to go, some tough on tape and on here. Um, and because I am crawling and working underneath the bus, um, the, right now this bus has zero air pressure in it, so the suspension is already as low as it's going to go. The air brakes are engaged, so the, it is safe for me to be crawling underneath this bus. I had somebody ask about that with the uh, transmission video I did, but yeah, the air, the, air, the air tanks are drained down to nothing right now. Um, and so I don't have to worry about the suspension falling on me. The mechanical spring loaded, you know, uh, parking brakes are engaged. Uh, so this bus is not moving and it's safe to work under here. So anyway, put the camera down and be back with you in a little bit. Okay. We got the first one off. You can see it's just a simple little plug that turns up in there. And then this little thing here is the valve that turns on and off. And so I have this style now, and these are already, uh, uh, pre-threaded so I don't need to use any Teflon tape on these I just gotta screw them up in there but when you pull on this cord um, which then has a loop here at the other end of it when you pull on that it opens up the valve here at the bottom and allows air and other fluids to escape and since this is a tri-chamber tank uh, mo most of your buses like I said are gonna have three anyway whether you've got you know dual chamber or tri-tank chamber or just multiple single chamber tanks so we're going to install these on all of them. And then here are the other two of these I have. I just got these off of Amazon. I think they were fairly cheap. And then the last thing we're going to do here is uh, replace that service port, uh, that international specific one with just a valve. Um, 
You can get these at any hardware store or on Amazon a little bit cheaper. These are just a quarter inch, you know, plumbing fitting, you know, one, male end on one, female end on the other. Um, so this will screw directly into the tank and that provides me an on off valve. And then um, I will put this uh, quick uh, connect fitting on here uh, with a little thread tape. This is the Milton style. Um, also knows, I think it's a one quarter inch MNPT, I think is what they call this thing. Um, and uh, it, it's just a quick connect type of thing. So I don't have, if I need to connect a hose or a tool, I don't have to, you know, thread a, a hose on there because all of my air hoses and other air tools have these type of, you know, quick connect um, fittings already on them. So in these, um, just, you know, very easy, very simply and easily just snap and lock into here and then uh, snap release. So there, there's a couple of different styles of these quick connects. I use the Milton's. Um, and the only reason I do that is that's what my mechanic uses with all of his tools. So our big shop air compressor and all of his tools and my few air tools, we just use Milton on everything. That way we don't have to change adapters on anything. Um, so that's uh, what I'm going to get prepped here and get ready to install. <laughs> okay, it is uh, important to kind of pay attention to what you're doing. Once I stopped and thought about this for a second, I realized that the male end uh, of the valve is going to screw into the tank, um, which means I've got two female ends, which means I need a couple here. You can buy these with a with a male end instead of a female end. Oops, actually, it's going to go like that. Um, but I don't have any of those handy, so I do have a whole box of couplers here, so we're going to fit this together. And this will be just fine. We'll just put some thread tape on here before it goes into the tank. Um, and you know here and here uh, to make these two connections and we'll be good to go. Okay, got the thread tape on, so these are ready to connect. Um, if you did not watch uh, my video the other night uh, where I was uh, doing these with coolant fittings, uh, it is important that you put these the thread tape on in the correct direction so that as you're twisting um, this into here, it's not pulling the thread tape loose on you. So you gotta kind of stop and think about the direction you put those on there. That is kind of important uh, to do correctly. And then as far as how much to use, I usually go around about five or six times. Um, you don't want it so thick that, you know, it, it interferes with, um, you know, with the, with the threads for screwing it in, but you want enough there to, to seal it up and be airtight. Okay, this assembly is done, put together, ready to be installed up in there. The, the valve is actually redundant. It's not necessary. Um, these quick disconnects, um, you know, only allow air to pass through them, you know, once, you know, once an end is installed in it. But I put the valve on here just as an added precaution. Um, if something were to happen to um, the quick disconnect here and, and air start passing through, you know, that would, you know, basically be a major air loss. And, um, you know, I'd, I'd lose air pressure. I'd lose, eventually, you know, I'd lose braking power and the emergency brakes, parking brakes would come on and I'd be stranded. So um, these things are inexpensive. It's just nice to have that added valve in there. So basically I've got two shutoffs on this line um, you know, if either one of them fails. So, okay. I've got all three, uh, of those drain plugs connected. I got the hose from the compressor here on the shop connected. Um, because my, uh, shop compressor, the hose has that same quick connect fitting. Um, I've got this goofy little coupler and valve on here so I can air up buses like this. Um, but before I open that valve, start airing this up, because as soon as I do that, the compressor is going to kick back on and that's kind of noisy. Um, it is important if you do have multiple tanks that you have your fill valve on the correct tank. Um, I think they call it like a holding tank or an accumulator tank, something like that. It's basically the first one off your compressor. And that is what feeds all of the other tanks in the system. Um, if you do it, and I'll show you once I get this aired up, but if you do it incorrectly and you put this fill, there, there's check valves between the different tanks so that air can't go from one tank to another um, from your basically primary and secondary back into this holding tank. So uh, if you do this incorrectly, um, if you look at your air pressure gauges on the dash, you'll see that one needle is aired up and the other one's not, which means you have one tank aired and the other one's not, um, which isn't what you want. So you gotta make sure you hit that holding tank, which then feeds both the primary and secondary. Like I said, this one's a tri-chamber, so the up front is my holding tank, and then primary and secondary, or secondary, primary, whatever the order is back there, I'm not sure. Um, but it's important to make sure you do that correctly. Um, so since I am going to be airing up this bus, which will lift the suspension, uh, I'm gonna make sure that I am not underneath of it uh, when I turn this on and start airing this thing up. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, up here in the uh, cab of the bus now, and you can see that uh, my air pressures on both tanks are up. This bus has two separate gauges, one for each tank. A lot of buses will have a single gauge and there'll just be two needles on it, but this one does have dual. So I know that I've connected into the right tank. I have air pressure on both of these. So now we're gonna go down and back underneath. Okay, last uh, clip for today, but uh, these are all installed. All I had laying around the shop was just some cheap little plastic clips, which uh, I don't expect them to hold up. So I'll get some better metal ones um, at a later date. And then when I do that, I'm also gonna shorten up these cords a little bit. They're a little bit longer than I would like. I'd like short them up in there, three or four inches. Um, but the reason I took this pathway is this general area here in front of the air tank, um, you know, between my battery box and this first storage compartment, um, is probably going to wind up holding a mini split at some point. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that these uh, cables were run out of the way uh, so I don't have to move them later. So uh, right here at the end of the uh, storage compartment seems as good as a place of any. So that's it for today. Um, pretty simple little project, but one that makes uh, just a lot of routine maintenance a lot easier. And one thing with routine maintenance, if you make it as easy as possible, you're more likely to do it. So uh, thanks for watching. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.